The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Yeah, all right. Live audience at home, live audience right here in the studio. Good morning, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS, and you are watching Open, the only show that brings the Bronx and the world to you. All right, so we got a lot going on for you. We're going to have a fantastic show. You know, coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at an uh, upcoming event on gun violence awareness and public health. It goes hand in hand. Plus, calling all artists, Uptown Talk holds open mic sessions. Are you ready? You have skills? Well, every last Wednesday, they'll stop by for a preview on what you can expect. And then, well, we'll find out about a, a path to power tour. It's a path to power tour coming to New York City this summer. Then we'll check out an art exhibition showcasing portraits of personal fiction. And then later on, we'll sit down with a, a BronxNet Access producer and hear all about their programming and their training. So stay tuned. All of some more. You're on deck. You ready? All of some more headed your way next on Open. That's the Bronx Academy of Letters. Bring the noise and clap again. There you go. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open, the only live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. And we want to give a special welcome to our, our new viewers and the people watching live on Manhattan Network, Manhattan ne Neighborhood Network. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Manhattan Neighborhood Network. They are brand new. We welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Now, leading things off on June the 23rd, uh, the New Doctors Coalition, they're going to be holding a, a policy summit. Gun violence is what it's all about. Gun violence is a health crisis, right? And joining us with all the details, we have uh, Nina Aguawe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Nina Aguawe. Thank you for having yes. me. Agrawal. <laughs> Agrawal. All right. Now, um, gun violence and the coalition, talk about it. Sure. Uh, well, gun violence is a public health crisis. It's, been, it's killing people every day. Mm -hmm. um, it affects us more in the inner cities. Um, and we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So I am a pediatrician in the Bronx. And I work with other doctors around the city, and we've created this New York Docs Coalition. And we come together to talk about various mm -hmm. health issues that we can work on um, to help our community, whether mm -hmm. that be locally, on a state, or on a, a national level. Yeah. Um, so we're really excited about our upcoming policy summit on gun violence this Saturday, June 23rd. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? What's gonna, what are you guys going to talk We're going to talk about gun violence, but... Bring it in. Bring it in. Right. Well, what we're going to talk about is what are the solutions? We all know the problems. Yeah. People are dying. We got the problem. Now we need the solution. Right. Yeah. Right. And this isn't about politics. It's about policy. So what are policies? What are prevention uh, measures that we can put into place um, to save lives? That's what we mm -hmm. do as doctors. We prevent uh, people from dying. We prevent... Uh, diseases, we prevent injuries, mm -hmm. um, and we need to do the same thing for gun violence. It's the same as any other injury or disease. How did you guys come together and, and want to do this, prevention of gun violence? Yeah, well, we've been working together for, for many years now, and I started doing uh, work with this group when um, health care reform um, mm -hmm. was being um, campaigned for, and we advocated for that. And when the tragedy happened at Sandy Hook, um, mm -hmm. I was horrified, yeah. and children, ch it, there's no reason 20 children should die in their yeah. elementary school. 
Um, so that day I went to a vigil and I started getting active in, uh, in, in organizing doctors to prevent gun violence. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So you're doing it all throughout the five boroughs. Right, we're doing it through that throughout the five boroughs, and we're inviting the other states: New York, um, New Jersey, Connecticut. Yeah. Anybody who wants to come, they're all welcome. Yeah. So on this date, June the twenty-third, Saturday, you're going to be at what location? We're going to be at Metropolitan Hospital. We're very thankful that they've uh, donated their space to us. It'll be from 8.30 to 12.30 mm -hmm. in the morning. Um, we're inviting health professionals, so whether it be physicians, medical students, public health professionals. But we're, we're, we're welcoming all. This is a partnership. No, but we can't do this alone. No. We need it all, It's all of us in this together. Any special speakers we should know about? Sure, we have a, a great lineup of speakers. I'm really excited about the policy experts, the physicians, the public health professionals, um, people coming from the community. I'm especially excited about New Paul. New Paul is a high school senior who I had the fortune of hearing at the March for Our Lives in New York City. And she's a child who, who grew up in the city. And she has a story of gun violence, of losing her father to gun violence yeah, and growing yeah. up with a father. And that's the reality of what happens here in New York City. And as a pediatrician in the Bronx, I hear kids who hear gunshots outside their windows, family members who have died, don't feel safe getting home from school. Mm. While the, the school shootings get a lot of uh, attention, it's a problem. We need to recognize what's happening to our kids right here in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. And they don't talk about Well, we, we talk about it in inner cities, but th that national news doesn't uh, capture that as, as much. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people advocating for it, too. There's the mothers of gun violence victims. They go around and they do lots of talks. Maybe you're going to get one or two of them to come in and speak. Um, we actually don't have uh, mothers. It's Moms Demand Action and Every Town oh. for Gun Safety. We do partner with them. There's so many people, so many great people yeah, involved. Yeah. Our focus is on policy. Mm -hmm. You know, what are things that we can do concretely um, to stop people from dying? Seven kids die every day from gun violence. Well, what are they talking about? What can we do? There are a lot of things we can do, and unfortunately, uh, that doesn't get a lot of immediate attention. Mm -hmm. um, but so the things that we can do are the things that are supported by research and data. So as doctors, we make decisions based on what research and data uh, tell us, uh -huh. not on our opinion. Um, so the same thing for gun violence. Mm -hmm. And there, one big thing that people don't know about is there has been an effective ban on the Centers for Disease Control in doing research into the solutions to gun violence. And that's been in place since 1996. Yeah. And Congress passed what's called the Dickey Amendment that prevented the CDC from using any funds to advocate or promote gun control. Whoa. And, and this, that just took place? This is 1996. I know that. It was policy or law back then, but yes. did it just stop? You stopped the funding stopped this year or 1996? The funding stopped. Oh, gotcha. So for the past 22 years, we haven't been able to study the solutions to gun violence on a large scale, and a lot of people don't know about this Dickey Amendment that the NRA got Congress to pass. And without solutions, without data, how do we how do we know what's going to work and what doesn't yeah. work? So. What we're advocating for is to repeal what's called the Dickey Amendment, lift the effective ban, and fund the CDC, just like mm -hmm. we do for safe sleep and motor vehicle safety. Yeah. It's not gun control, it's gun safety. You know, just like we didn't ban cars, we put in car seats and airbags and seat belts. We make them safer. Just like you don't put a drunk driver behind a wheel, you shouldn't put a drunk person behind a gun. That's right. So there's something called the Extreme Risk Protection Order, which prevents people who are at risk for uh, perpetrating of gun violence, um, which may have a risk factor for violence or substance abuse. Um, so this legislation will prevent these people from having guns. We can take guns away from these people until, you know, they're at less risk for perpetrating violence. Yeah, yeah. So we have, what do you want the public to do about this? Can, can you move the public to action? Should well, they call their elected officials or, or, or what? We want to partner with, with everybody, and we need to make normalize this discussion. We need to ask about guns. So June 21st is National Ask Day, 
And that's where we encourage parents to ask if there's a gun where their child plays. Mm -hmm. That could be in a home, that could be on the street. Um, parents need to have these discussions. They want to keep their kids safe. Just like if you're sending a child to a home that um, is serving nuts and your child's allergic to nuts. Mm -hmm. It's about child safety. So the more we have these conversations at our dining room table, um, at schools, the more we can it, basically say we all want to keep kids safe. You have 30 seconds to ask. I'm going to give you that camera right there. You can ask the public. I'm asking the public to, uh, to start the conversation. Gun violence is ki killing children and we need to do something about it and we can do something about it. So I want you to, to talk to your family members, talk to your friends, talk to your doctors, talk to anybody and everybody you know about the, the obstacles to, pre to preventing gun violence and uh, the solutions. There you go, give them a big round of applause everybody. Nina Agrawal. New York Doctors Coalition. Thank you so much. Where can we go for more information? Is there a website we can go there to? There is a website. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know the Facebook? website offhand. <laughs> there is a Facebook. You have all the information. Okay, New York Doctors Coalition. I'm sure look up New York Doctors Coalition to find out what you, do, you guys are doing, right? Yes, all yes. All right, thank you so much, Nina. Okay, thank all right, you. All we have to take a quick break. Hold on. We have to take a quick break and we'll, we'll take a look at the Bronx Open Mic event. But first, let's check out the, the old timers there at Yankee Stadium. It's special. It's so special for me. I was able to celebrate my birthday the other day. It's just been a really good weekend for us. I, my, you know, my grandbaby was able to come up and travel up here. All, all the, the, it was the first time in the last few years that I've been invited to Old Timers Day where I wasn't coaching. I, you know, I coach high school baseball. I coach my son's uh, team. And so everybody was like, you got to go. We got to go to New York. We got to go to New York. You don't have nothing going on. So it, it's, it's just turned out to be a wonderful, special time for us. And, and, and New York's always a special place. I mean, to have all my kids back here. Oh, they're uh, all here today. Everybody's here today. To have us drive around and, and, and just everywhere we look is a memory. Um, you know, my oldest son went to school here. He grew up, you know, they, they grew up here. They grew up at this stadium. And so it's just, uh, it's a special place for us. Our neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket. And it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. And they're clapping. There they go. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. How you doing, everybody? I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. You know, every last Wednesday of the month, Uptown Talk, they're going to be holding an open mic. It's an open mic showcase, and it's right here in the Boogie Down Bronx. And joining us with all the details, we have Luz Osoria. <laughs> and she's, don't let me say it. <laughs> Delicia. Felicia. 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 Yes. 
Delicia. That's the association. We well, welcome you guys <laughs> to the show. You. First time on Open? Yes. yes. Well, thank we you. welcome you with open arms. Ah, uh, thank you. All we right. appreciate that. Now, Happiness. tell us what you're all about. Tell us what Uptown Talk is about. Yeah. Um, so, we're actually making a year in August. Uh -huh. We're a collective of artists who just. Oh, you're brand new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're co well, individually, we've been hosting events been and doing, doing things for a while, but we came together, a collective of artists. So, there's yeah. three poets, we have a comedian, a DJ, a photographer, and an actor. Uh -huh. uh, we came together essentially to create spaces uptown um, for artists to be able to share their their um, their word and their the poetry and, and yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and exactly. it's, it's the singers and yeah. So we open our doors to everybody. Um, so we have singers, we've had uh, even dancers, spoken word, spoken spoken word hip hop, uh, monologues. We have everything. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you jumped on, you said, boom, I'm in the room. <laughs> yeah, um, this space, uh, creating this space was so important because mm -hmm. I'm from Westchester, I'm from Yonkers. Are you from the, uh, okay, the other Bronx? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. And, um, Yonkers is right there. It is right there. Yeah. And as a young person, being a poet, it was so hard for me to find safe spaces or artist spaces to perform. Mm -hmm. um, usually there's... If there you want to perform or go to an artist space, you have to go all the way downtown or Brooklyn. Okay. So yeah. this was really important for us to be able to collaborate and do something yeah. like this in Uptown. That's yeah. why it's called Uptown Talk. It's like yeah. you don't have to you don't have to come all the way downtown. You're coming from a little yeah. bit of Uptown to yeah. You're coming a little bit downtown to the Bronx. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Yonkers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea was like before before there weren't that many um, like spaces in the Bronx or Uptown to to go and showcase your work. And there yeah. are other organizations now rising up, like Project X, uh, NYCD Grind, who are yeah. doing th that work. Um, but, uh, you know, what we're trying to do essentially is not just create spaces, but build partnerships. So, like, right now... So that's the mission. Right. You, you want to build partnerships. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, Barcelona Bites is a, is a Latino-owned uh, um, business. Uh -huh. We actually also started a partnership with Casa Wine Bar in the Heights. Wow. That's also a Latino-owned uh, business. Uh -huh. And we're actually going to La Nueva Estrella in the Bronx. Uh, we're starting in August there, which is also a Latino-owned uh, business. Um, and, is that uh, a restaurant? Yeah, it's a restaurant. Oh, they have one uh, in, uh, in Corona, too. Corona oh, yeah, Prince. I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're yeah. kind of just trying to take over the whole uptown <laughs> uh, um, space. So yeah, we yeah. have a, a few. We started base basically with Barcelona Bites, Uptown Talk every last Wednesday, but now yeah. we have every second, second Tuesday, Tuesday mm -hmm. at Casa, and we're working the on... third Thursday at La Nueva Estrella. Yeah. Uh, so Uptown uh, Talk's going to have a plenty of events. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they get the good food and all that stuff. In yeah, there. That, yes. that too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Happy so, hour specials and all that. Uh, but what's most yeah. important about Uptown Talk is just giving the spaces for artists to express themselves, but especially black and brown mm -hmm. um, youth and, and people in general. Um, yeah. We need to f express ourselves. Um, I know therapy, in a way. therapy. I mean, me and Diana, we, we've had this conversation upon joining you and coming together. Spoken word? Yeah. Yes, All right. and we came coming together. You know, poetry is part of our survival. It's mm -hmm. part of um, our, our healing. Mm -hmm. And um, th I'm in a transition period, and I know Diana was and is, and we always are, right. especially when you're inner city youth and going through trauma or whatever those things are. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be able to find something and a way to express yourself. A way to cope and us doing this um this open mic is our survival this is right. i remember there was moments that it's like you know i needed to be here i needed to be around all this creativity right yeah right. just to gift your mind off of the negativity right. yeah. yeah it's a way of healing i think a way of uh therapy i know we talk about uh about that uh for black and brown people access to mental health services are difficult um, it, because there's a stigma and you, get, you know exactly. this there's yeah, a stigma, a there's also an economic uh, factor yeah. as well. And so um, creating, I mean, historically, black and brown people have found healing through creation, through art. That's mm -hmm. where hip hop and jazz and all these things were born, right? Um, and so having spaces where you can go ahead and share that um, and see other people, whether it's their first time performing, their hundredth time performing, um, in that same struggle and finding those same paths, yeah. I think that's a beautiful thing. And not everybody is, is going to come out and say, hey, I'm going to use this for therapy. Right. People write a book, sometimes they use it for therapy, get it out of their mind, put it on, on, right. on, in, on the paper, right. or they come up with a screenplay, right. they put it, you know, 
put it on the screenplay, get it out of the mind. You guys are exercising your right. your abilities too right. with the open mic, right? Mm -hmm. it's, and it hey, gives people let validation. me show you what I'm working with. Right, exactly. Yeah. It gives people a voice. And sometimes you don't realize what you're putting out there um, in the open mic space could be helping somebody else. Right. Yeah. We have people that are inspired in the moment that say, you know what, I never performed before, but tonight, tonight I'm yeah. going to perform. Tonight's tonight. Yeah. yeah. And the most right. beautiful thing is like the partnerships that happen. So like, People will meet at our events and then make songs together and then have photo shoots together. Yes. So like that, creating harmony so right there on the spot. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, and then you know we're what, one of the bigger biggest things that we want to do eventually is grow um, to take this knowledge that we're gaining uh -huh. from artists and uh, create workshops for students, like partner with uh, educators um, oh. to to take what we're doing into the classrooms or into summer programs, etc. Um, and and the other piece is is giving artists um, those opportunities that come our way. Um, because what we're, like, ha after starting Uptown Talk, we have had all these opportunities presented to us. Yeah. Um, we're actually uh, bringing a crowd of performers to the New York and Poets Cafe uh, block, block party, party this summer. We're partnering with Alianza Dominicana, um, Dominican writers mm -hmm. at Alianza Dominicana to okay. put together an event. So, yeah, we want to, like, Pass that on to our people who follow us. And Beautiful. Have you know, we have one minute, and uh, I think the Bronx Academy of Letters and uh, our people watching us at home, they want to hear, like, maybe just a, a pinch of uh, spoken word. Maybe? Yes? No? Yes? No? Do you want to share? Skills live on TV. Ba -ba bam bam um, Everybody there say, let's hear it. Um, I, I can do a piece. Okay. okay. Uh, I can do a really short piece. Okay, a short piece. Okay. It's called... Uh, The American Dream. Okay. okay. El sueño americano. Como te idolatra, te cantan canciones, te escriben poesías por ti. Entregan sus armas por ti, riesgan sus vidas, the American Dream. More like American Nightmare looks so sweet, but burns like poison on my tongue as I scream, respect me, respetenme. I was born on the border like a nomad, raised in the limbo, the hyphen between Latina and American to Too brown to be American, too American for my culture. El sueño americano. Me dijeron que era de oro y por él crucé la frontera, dejando mis sueños atrás. Qué desilusión, porque hoy se siente como azufre y sufro. Because I see the sacrifices for me, but I don't want to turn in my dreams just to survive or leave them at the border before I sell out my soul. Como ellos are crushed under the bar of complacency, the hyphenated prison of my identity that asks me to curse my people, to be American nunca. Quisiera volar, somos dioses y diosas, el trono nos pertenece. De una manera u otra se lo regresaré a mi gente, eso lo prometo. My American dream. Mi gente. <laughs> I like that you did, it was like a bilingual thing, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Now, you don't hear too much of that, you know, yeah. people doing spoken word and bilingual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. All right, so you have a website? Tell yes. us about it real um, quick. Well, we don't have a website yet. Um, But we have Facebook, Instagram, all that. That's so, where we can go. Wh right. wh how do we get there? Instagram is Uptown Talk, just Uptown Talk. Um, uh, Twitter is Uptown Talk NY, and Facebook is uh, slash Uptown Talk. Luz Azoria, give her a big round of applause. Co-founder, branding and talent management, Uptown Talk, and Felicia. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Co-founder, finance and community engagement, Uptown Talk. Right. Delicia, Felicia. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for stopping by, okay? Come by again, and thank good you. luck, and thank, thank you. you for everything that we you do. We appreciate you having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And get more people involved. Yes. You know how to do it. All right, we have to take a quick <laughs> break right here, but stay tuned. We'll be right back on deck with more Open next. Thank you. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all gonna be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Welcome back. 
You know, the Bronx Documentary Center they held an exhibition showcasing what they believe are social injustices through photography. Let's take a look. You know that old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, a publishing house called Photo Evidence sure does. By using photography to draw attention to human rights violations, injustices, and forms of oppression whenever and wherever they may occur. Every year, the organization recognizes one photographer to receive the Photo Evidence Book Award, which is a published book of the photographer's work. This exhibit is the 2018 Photo Evidence Book Award, and what you're seeing here are the work of three photographers. The winner, Hasue Rivas, who's a native photographer, who spent seven years, seven months, in the camps at Standing Rock, uh, photographing the resistance to the Dakota Access Pipeline. And he was awarded the prize this year by an international jury of photographers and photo editors. And we're publishing his book, Standing Strong. We've published 21 books in the last seven years, ranging from the treatment of the mentally ill in seven African countries in crisis, to the struggle of immigrants trying to cross the Mediterranean to reach Europe. The Bronx Documentary Center also pairs up with photo evidence to showcase the emotion evoking photography. We partner every year with Photo Evidence, which does this big book award, and so we always have the winners here. And they always pick the best, really the best photojournalism in the world. Um, and these are internationally you know, renowned projects. Um, the, the project about the Dakota pipeline and the, the protest against the, the pipeline coming through the Native American lands, it's just, um, I mean, the work is really kind of riveting. It's graphic. It's powerful. There's a lot of emotion in it. Um, it's really about sort of people like resisting sort of this corporate power that's trying to push through their lands. If it's not trending on social media, we're not going to know about it. Like I, especially in my school, like just giving an own, my own personal example. Um, I go to school like on 13th Street with it's like a pretty like large. It's not a large school, but it just has like a bunch of. Um, girls who, sh who have access to social media and a lot of things and you'll notice that if it's not trending we're not going to know about it and it's until I came to the Bronx Documentary Center that I really learned that there's much more going on around the world than what I'm what I see on my Instagram feed. Most of these uh, photos come from like places that have been neglected a lot so like let's say um, Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan was the failed American dream. And then the pipeline was just like minorities being ignored, specifically Native Americans. The same thing that's happening with the Bronx. The Bronx is being neglected, has been neglected, and it just goes in with just like how when you neglect a certain place because it's like a failed American dream, it causes a lot of problems. But it's also, there is hope within that community as well. It's just not being exploited the way it should be. The eye-catching photos often hit home to members of the community. Some can relate to similar forms of oppression in their own lives. I automatically connected with the first paintings or first pictures that I saw, which happened to have transgendered women. Um, and like we were talking about, they are marginalized. Now these photos may be internationally renowned, but this is inspiring change right here in the Bronx. Reporting for BronxNet, Darissa White. And welcome back, and the crew's gonna clap like this at home <laughs> in the studio. And you know, on July the 14th, our next guest will hold a, a Path to Power tour. And joining us on the phone, we, with all the details, we have uh, Carmela Marie. Carmela, how are you? I am well, sir. How are you? Good, good, good. Where are you right now? I am in Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> Youngstown, Youngstown, Ohio. All right. Yes. So tell us about this wonderful tour. Yes, so um, the Path to Power by Black, Bold, and Natural uh, was born out of the fact that um, we were really wanting to focus in on Black female entrepreneurship uh -huh. um, and showcasing Black excellence um, because the women that I came across in another show that I hosted, with a hair show, were just saying how in how inspired they were to start businesses and you know take control over their dreams mm. and knowing that they could do it. So we pulled out kind of the aspect of, you know, empowering women 
and created uh, the Black Bolder Natural Path to Power Tour, which yeah. we did our first one in Youngstown. And, and what inspired it? Um, just the women that I've come across um, who need help, right? Mm. So um, help understanding how to find their voice um, and how to get on that path to power, as yeah. well as um, staying on that. So giving women the tools to actually um, maintain where they are. So it started in Youngstown. Is it uh, coming all across the nation? Is it coming to New York City? It is. So we are going to be coming to New York City July 14th. Uh -huh. at, um, and we're coming to the National Black Theater. Um, and that That's right um, off 125th is, Street. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and Fifth Avenue. On Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. 2031 Fifth Avenue. Uh -huh. So um, we've done quite a few events in New York. So we're excited to bring this particular event uh, and to New York. What is the message to all the wonderful people coming down? Um, that um, that your voice is valid, your ideas are valid, are actually valid, and that with the right tools and the right people and the right environment, you can mm -hmm. find that your path to power um, and keep on that path to power. Yeah, and what's the theme? Do you have a theme for it? Theme is find your voice because find that's where it starts voice. at. You have to be strong enough to have a solid voice. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, what inspiration or what message would you give to people who are looking to find their voice? Um, if you know that it already exists within you, um, those skill sets, that, that strength that you need is within you. You just need to know mm -hmm. that and recognize that who you are is more than enough. Mm -hmm. And what can people expect when they come? Yes, we're going to have a, a really great host of speakers. Uh, we have Ina Shed, who's from New York. She is uh -huh. looking at the life, so the healthiness of things, the body. Uh, we have Fawn E. Williams, who's looking at uh, who, a spiritual coach, looking at, you know, our soul, because that, that is important as well. Um, then we also have some entrepreneurs in the house, Dr. Tonya L. Farmer, who is a mm -hmm. surgeon, and what her story and what she's going through, as well as another New Yorker, Elizabeth Privet. Uh, she's a blogger, and her story is amazing about how she worked her way through to now go to law school. Sounds so like it's going to be great speakers, great uh, vendors, um, and just black excellence overall. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be very educational for everyone. It is educational, insightful, and we are looking to make sure that everybody leaves with something more. Mm -hmm. And what do you what are you going to leave them with? What do you think they're going to leave with? Um, the ability to know that um, that it's like everything that they need is in the house to mm -hmm. actually get on that path to power. Women in general, a lot of times, sometimes we don't have that confidence um, enough to know to start and to go and to persist. Mm -hmm. And we are going to give them some 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 physical tools, some actual tools they can use, as well as some um, some words of encouragement and points and affirmations to keep them going, as well as a, a follow-up afterwards. Sounds like this is going to be a major part of the, the women's movement, and you got the election day coming up and all that. Uh, are you talking uh, to that point? Um, indirectly. So finding your voice is that. I think that we, if we can build the foundation mm -hmm. across the board, that foundation can help, you know, birth out other things. And that's really the key to this. We aren't talking specifically to, but what we are doing is building a, a foundation so that some, so something can be birthed out of that. All right. Remember that song? Where do we go from here? <laughs> Where do we go from here? Yes. We go up. We are on our way up. And that is what is so exciting. The energy that is out there, the, the women who are ready and willing and waiting, um, that is the energy that is driving this whole Path to Power movement. Yeah. And, of course, it's uh, Black, Bold, and Natural's Path to Power. It's not just a celebration of black female entrepreneurship, but uh, it's a doorway to foster a community of black excellence in a world where we need to harness all of our resources so that we can continue to persist. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And all of our panelists happen to all be natural. Yes. So um, curls and froze and all. And where can we go for more information on what you're doing? 
Yes, you can visit carmelamarie.com, uh-huh. and that's C-A-R-M-E-L-L-A-M-A-R-I-E.com. There you go, Path to Power. And we have the Bronx yes. Academy of Letters here, and they're going to give you a big round of applause. Look. You awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Carmela Marie, Path to Power Tour. Thank you so much, and, and make sure you share more with us, okay? We will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, All right we have to take a quick break right here, but uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open Next. For all the papas out there, let's stop what we're doing and take a moment. A moment to be with our kids. They can be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments, kooky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count because every time dads take a moment to be with their kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's all take a moment to make a moment today. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Welcome back, welcome back. On June the 21st, the, uh, the Personal Portraits of Personal Fiction ex- exhibition will take place. It's going to kick off, and joining us with all the information and the preview, we have photographer Carlos David. You were here before, right? Yeah, I was here. I was yeah, here. and also jazz singer Ellen O'Brien. Give them, give them both a big round of applause. Look, the crew, they're here. Look at this. They're working yeah. hard. We're going to hand them towels so they can wipe the sweat off their heads and everything like that. They work. <laughs> the Bronx Academy of Letters. All right, tell us about the, your story. Tell us about what we're doing. Well, Persona is a series of portraits of people representing characters. I invite each person to tell me what's their character inside, like um, your alter fantasy. ego. Yeah. Yeah, fantasy exactly. character. Yeah. You know. Because I'm always curious, you know, I can see you, but I want to see what's inside you. What's inside you? And we did a, a collection of around uh, 80 to 100 people where everyone will bring their character and we take photos of it. And they got to wear costumes? And yeah, they got to wear costumes. Or, um, I yeah, mean, that was one of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, something like this, right? Uh-huh. And it goes from very simple portraits to a more complicated... Uh, no, wait, did this took place already? Yeah, I did it... Uh, you have another one coming up. Yeah, I have another exhibit coming out. And it's going to be... Same. No, but uh, so what happened was the, the shoot was all last year, basically. All right. And oh, right. That's the one you were talking about before you... Right. Exactly. Right, right, right. And he opened gotcha. up at El yes. Barrio Art Space where we live. Yes. And then um, what we're doing now is the Ozanu Art Space. Uh-huh. Uh, Ozano, right? Ozano. Yeah, Ozano yeah. Art Space, which is downtown. Um, that's in Chelsea. Um, we're doing and that now. This is a great space because it's a uh, um, philanthropic artist-run space. It's... Uh, made by Nikki Shiro and Frederick uh, Osano. Yeah. And it's very few rare places in Chelsea that are uh, more philanthropic than commercial. Yeah. 
and they're interested in, in empowering artists of underrepresented communities, mm -hmm. and that's how we get together. Because I'm yeah. working, you know, on uh, East Harlem with people from the community, which is not very yeah. represented. How, in how do you reach out to these artists who want to get involved in something like that? Well, I uh, started with the community around me, and now I want to start the second phase of the project. So these images are the same that I already yeah. exposed, yeah. and they're going around different places. And now I want to work with underrepresented communities, and uh, the next one is going to be uh, people with disabilities. I have a group of uh, oh, neighbors yeah. that yeah. are always... Uh, uh, they're very strong people uh, working on uh, empowering themselves with tools mm -hmm. and all. So I want to involve them in the project yeah. now. And, and uh, Ellen, of course, just has to come from somewhere. Yes. You know, you guys sat down. You said, you know what? Let's let's do this particular project. How did it come about? Well, this was him. I was just one of the um, people in his, uh, in his exhibition. Life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so basically he asked me. started by. It. Yeah, he asked. At where we live in El Barrio Art Space yeah. is um, it's uh, affordable housing for artists only. And it's through El Barrio Fight Back and mm -hmm. um, Art Space, which is out of Minneapolis. And it's affordable housing. They do it all over the United States. Uh -huh. So basically, it's a lottery. And 53,000 people applied for only 89 units. Yeah. So was. every single one of uh, us that live in that building uh -huh. is a sculptor, an artist, a singer, a, singer. a choreographer. We have graphic designers, fashion designers. And we have this beautiful community of talented uh -huh. people. And so all of us draw upon each other like he did my cd cover for one of my jazz albums um my yeah. our makeup artist angel does a lot of makeup for all of us so you know we go to each other so he came to all of us and said oh. do you want to do this show and we all said absolutely yeah. he's one of the best fashion photographers that i know of so mm -hmm. that's how it came about when yeah. you're doing your work do you listen to her music yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, they we put that video. Uh, they made me sing live, <laughs> that actually. Inspires me, right? <laughs> that inspires me. Good, yeah, good. so I wanted to work with the community around uh -huh. me since mm -hmm. everybody's an artist. That was uh, uh, the first interest, right? Yeah. And uh, to, to get involved uh, together in creative projects. Mm. Uh, I wanted to say also, it is uh, showing uh, at Asanur on the 21st and then at Instituto Cervantes on the 22nd. It's opening uh -huh. as well. And also at the Four Freedoms Park in Franklin D. Roosevelt, Four Freedoms Park. So there's three shows right oh, now going busy. on. You guys same. are busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, going, it's going well. So. Yeah. Very, very and, good. and everything, if I, I always say people might not remember everything we say in the interview. So everything is on his website, uh -huh. which is carlosdavid.org. So carlosdavid.org. Yes. Right, we're going to say it again before we get off. Yes. But what yes. do we have here? So this is from the Instituto Cervantes. I did these pictures as well. I, I do a lot of commercial work, but I have it here so that people can remember that it's oh. showing on that space uh, on the 22nd. Okay. And that's a, a Spanish school it's yeah. a, for, from Spain. Uh, this is a book I did uh, of the portraits just to have uh, um, all of the images uh, in a small booklet. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully the next one is going to be bigger. And <laughs> oh, and it gets uh, bigger and better. Yeah, it gets exactly. Bigger and better. That's the goal, right? Yeah. And this is the invitation for the the new show that uh, this is should as yeah. well. So um, this is one of the main images. And this that is at Ozeno. That's an Ozeno. So I I just I, I know it's spelled. This is like French, right? Yeah, right? it's French. The, the I just wrote it down. I spelled it phonetically. I said O <laughs> Z E N Zen. And put oh. another O at the end, O Zeno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of trouble uh, saying that word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, guys. All right, good. So on the June 21st, you're going to be there through August 30th. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be there for a, mm -hmm. for a good while. All right, great. great. And we have, you know, life size uh, portraits, uh, mm -hmm. uh, prints uh, of the show. So and, it's and very impressive to and see. And you have that. Ellen there singing with you. You know, you're a jazz singer. <laughs> yes, you, you've yes. been doing this for a little while, right? My whole life, yes. Can you give us a little piece? Yes, Can please, you yes, touch us? please, please. Can you touch us? <laughs> a more jazz R&B. Oh, yeah. I like the old school yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, you are my love and you can't deny. You know it's true, but you try to hide. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah. You turn down love like it's really bad. No, no, no. You can't get what you never had, no, no. Oh, oh. 
Yeah. Give her a big hand. Carlos, now I know. Yeah. I know how this helps you with your work. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> this no, is great. Always, this is great. Really inspiring. So you go to the really website? CarlosDavid.org. Org. <laughs> Do you remember? Organ. <laughs> Carlos David, did you just say not organ? Nope. <laughs> did I just hear that? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening. Organ. Yeah, right. <laughs> Carlos David dot org. Yeah, you could probably try to go there, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. That would yeah, be a different show. <laughs> say it again. Carlos David dot org. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Give Thank them you, a big Bob. round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Carlos David dot org. The photographer and Ellen O'Brien, jazz singer. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> personal portraits of personal fiction. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Bob. Thank, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more <laughs> <laughs> next. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the morning show Open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. There you go. Welcome back. Welcome, 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 welcome. Our next guest is a public access producer at BronxNet and a joins us for a look at her show and training experiences. She does it all right here. We welcome Kitty Rose yeah. to the show. Kitty, yes. high five, hey. boom, 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 low yeah. five. <laughs> yes. hey, what does that say on your arm there? Well, even though we are in the Bronx, I am Brooklyn Divine. All right, yes. Brooklyn's in the Bronx. Even though my Bronx kids Road. say you should stop telling people you're from Brooklyn because I've been in the Bronx now 19 years. Oh, so, you, but you're, yeah. You're from the Boogie Down Bronx now. Okay. Tell us about yeah. yourself. 
Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that. I, well, I'm Kitty Rose, mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, I am an Access producer here in BronxNet. Mm -hmm. I am in my third season of uh, producing and starring in my show called The Movement <coughs> Natural mm -hmm. Sessions. Um, but besides that, you know, I'm a minister, so I use my ministry as a way oh, to good. share yeah. my message or the message on public access television, trying to, not trying, changing the matrix of mm -hmm. programming of what it is that we are So when people giving. tune into you, what are, they, what are they watching? What are they watching? They are watching a, similar to us, a raw, candid conversation between two, a couple of more, but most of the time two folks, mm -hmm. where we're not just having the conversation, but we're actually providing the solutions. We're providing the what now. Solutions to problems. Solutions to, to life. Problems, I don't life. even want to say problems. I think the problem is that we look at life as problems and yeah. not just things that happen in life, which right, is just enough. what life experiments, in, if you could say instead of the word problems. So what we do is we have these open conversations <laughs> about life experiments, and then in that we find solutions in making people feel like they're not alone gotcha. in what they're going through. That's a new way of looking at it. Because, I think you know, so. You hear commercials on TV and hear them on radio. They always come up with a problem and then a solution. Mm -hmm. Problem, solution, problem, mm -hmm. solution. Those were always working hand in hand right. for us. Like. Uh, if you suffer from nasal congestion, <laughs> try Dristan. New, new, no, <laughs> you know, but, here's but, a problem. You have the congestion, how, but here's Dristan that will open up your nasal passages. And then you see how the side effects are in the fine print. Yeah. So yeah. instead of, <laughs> so our well, side That's for all that other crazy medicine that they talk right, about. <laughs> but our side effects are in your face. In your face. Out loud. Right there. Like, okay, this is, this is what's going to happen. Right. But when it happens, this is what you can do. That's right. Solution to the, the immediate yes. problem the at now. hand. The yes. problem at hand. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, so many, like the new thing now is having the conversation, which I think is ideal that I came on today's show yeah. because your earlier guest was providing the solutions. And that's what my show does is we're not just having the conversation. Like we're past that. Like uh, what, uh, what now? Okay, we know this. We know that. What do we do? And do you have follow-ups? Because a lot of people say, all right, let's do this. You know, and then they do that and then it fades out. I it's do, like a New Year's resolution. And I don't. People, you know, they come up with a New Year's resolution in a couple of weeks or a couple of months into a however long it takes. It kind of fades I, out. And they're like, oh. I do and I don't because most of the guests, <clears> by <throat> the time, my age group of guests ranges, but most of my guests are 40 plus. So we are already at a stage where we the light bulb moment has happened. So there really isn't a follow up because they're coming to, they're, they're at a place where at that moment they don't mind sharing their story yeah. because they have learned to be accountable and they've learned to move forward so there is really no follow-up because initially that initial conversation is where I'm getting that story at and what's healing for the folks out and they there. they get empowered right there. Right then and there. Right there. And yeah. they stay charged up, powered I up. I think so. That's been the feedback so far mm -hmm. from the what, the folks that are watching the show. Well, we got to tune in and check yes. this out. Yes. <laughs> Which All is right. one of the reasons why I came back on, uh, I wanted to come on open because BronxNet right. does such great programming and my show comes on a little late so I wanted to uh -huh. introduce my show to your audience. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so when are you on next? I'm on every Wednesday at 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then we repeat again Thursdays at 12 a.m. You know, <laughs> so I, I'm, a, I'm around, you know, I, I, I can cater to your age group, but my conversations sometimes are a little racy. So because of how detailed BronxNet is, we decided to come together um, and program it for me the, for the late night audience. All right, and <clears throat> now we're on uh, Manhattan Neighborhood yes. Network. Manhattan Neighborhood Network is and carrying us also, right now. And I'm also Big up on to everybody that tuning in and checking that out, yes. too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. I'm on Manhattan Network on Tuesdays. Oh, yeah? Which is another great uh, <clears throat> asset of being a BronxNet community producer. Because uh -huh. once I got my training on BronxNet, then I was able to now submit my shows to the other public access channels mm -hmm. as well. So I just got picked up for the fall for Eminem, and I've been on the HD channel also as well. And you've been around for a while. Now, you did yeah. some things with uh, MTV and yes. uh, LL Cool J, Barbara Tucker, and Maxwell. Yes. Talk about it. Well, you know, I might look <laughs> like I'm 20, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been around for a minute. But, you know, I mean, and, and, and that's why my show some, on Some Love has been successful, because most of my guests has been people that I've known over uh, the last 20 years. So uh, not only is the show inviting, but there's a trust level that they have because they've known me almost 20 years. Yeah. You know. You're not that old. Uh, <laughs> you know, they say black don't crack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So what inspired you to do what you do on TV? I mean, you, you're a dancer. You've right. You've done a lot of things on MTV and for LL Cool J and all those other mm -hmm. uh, artists uh, in the business. What inspired you to come on TV? Two things. Um, my ministry, really, um, I didn't, I wasn't aware, being in the entertainment industry, you don't know necessarily where your life is going to take you. I became a minister at 10, but then got detoured when I got in the industry. I became a dancer, I became a model, and now I got distracted. And I saw that. some things come yeah. through, and I got distracted. But then I became a mom, and I became a wife, and then I had to change uh, how I was doing business and how I wanted to represent myself. So just in the transition transitions of life and the involvement of things that's mm -hmm. happening, um, one of the things as a Bronx resident, I never took advantage of anything in the Bronx. So mm -hmm. when I s took the class here at BronxNet to get my training as a field producer, I was trying to figure out, well, how do I combine my ministry, my art, with what I've learned at BronxNet? Oh, yeah, you're putting it all together. And I put it all together. Uh -huh. So I figured, you know what, what better platform than television and using that as a medium to, to kind of break barriers mm -hmm. and share this different kind of ministry that... That, that is Kitty Rose. And that's the first thing she did, did when, you, when she sat down. She said, where are these cameras at? Yeah, yes. <laughs> What's my <laughs> photographer? Because, <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a, you got to be your own publicist. You have to be your own, you know, manager. You have, to, you have to still put in the work to let your message be known. You can hire folks to do it, but yeah. you have to learn that's and, right. and, and still apply do it those than things. You. No, sir. You brought some notes. Did you yes. use any of those notes yet? I did not. Oh, what do you have there? <laughs> well, I wanted to talk about some of the shows um, to kind of give a viewpoint. But you one, got one show minute. in particular. Well, they just held up a one minute sign. So, a lot of the guests that's been on the show has been on other Bronx Net shows, like Open. Um, and one of my favorite shows is with Nadej Pata, who's your co star oh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. for um, Paris Blues in Harlem. Um, but she that's talked been picked about up in Philadelphia. that's been picked up, uh, yeah. yes. You know about but it? the beautiful thing about it is that her story, because now you know she's this big time director, actress. But her story on my show was the transition of getting to that point because her son said to her, "You're just a mom." And mm. when that light bulb happened, like I'm just a mom because I'm going to PTA and running around. Wait, I'm more than that. I'm taking care of your tail. But but I'm more than I'm that. I'm more than that. And and now what? Now she has three films mm -hmm. in festivals, and she got you to co-star in a movie with her. So mm -hmm. that's that's what the show is about. The show is about that light bulb moment, and now when we get it, moving forward. Beautiful. Where can we go to get more information on what you're doing? Please go to my YouTube channel. That is the biggest the place. YouTube. The YouTube channel. My channel is Miss Kitty Rose One. Uh -huh. M S K I T T Y R O S E, the number Say one, it again. all one word. Say it again. M S K I T T Y R O S E, the number one, all one word. Check that out. <laughs> but Wednesdays at <laughs> on BronxNet uh -huh. at ten at eleven o'clock, and Thursdays at twelve a.m. That's when you can catch me. There you go. Give a big round of applause, everybody. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Kitty Rose, the Kitty Rose lifestyle. Yes. Kitty Rose lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and come back again, okay? Don't say that. And I'm going to come on your show, too. Please. All right. All right. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's all the time we have for today's show. I'd like to thank you, our guests, for tuning in and checking it all out. And if you missed any part of today's show, well, you can tune into the Recablecast of Open at 5 and 10 p.m. or you can watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org or you can catch an all new episode Wednesday at 10 a.m. with our host, Darren Jaime. For all of us here at Bronxnet, have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you, and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. Mm. So choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser. And remember, right. whether you say you can or you can't, either way, you're right. And give yourselves another big round of applause. The Bronx Academy of Letters in the house. Thank you so much. I'll catch you on 107.5 WBLS. I'll see you there. Peace.